Hi everyone, I hope you're doing great today. Okay, so I have some very, very interesting revelations to share with us uh, regarding the upcoming US elections. You know, of course, many of you who follow me know that I've been doing quite a number of videos uh, to this effect. And I remember the last video, the last major video that I put out to this effect, I had already exposed in that video that the Democrat Party of America had a war game of their own, okay? And in that war game, they had the man called John Podesta play the role of Joe Biden because they, it's more like a reenactment of events that are meant to happen. In this case, the U.S. elections built for November the 3rd, 2020. And so in that war game, they cast John Podesta as the president, Biden, okay? And remember that I told you in that video that unlike during the 2016 elections when Hillary Clinton, who actually lost the elections, conceded to Donald Trump that in the war games where John Podesta was playing the role of Joe Biden, that they made him not to concede elections, even though through the war games, they found out that Joe Biden was going to lose to Donald Trump, just the same way that Hillary lost to Trump in 2016. They found out, it's just that in the war game, they claimed that it was going to be a narrow lead, a narrow margin by which Trump is going to win the elections. And now rather than Biden, which is now being played by Podesta, rather than him now conceding, he decided no, he was not going to concede, alleging or saying that his party was not going to let him concede elections. And I told you in that video, I told you clearly in that video, that these guys already know, they know what is coming. They know that Donald J. Trump is going to win by a landslide. If the Democrats are telling you that Trump is winning by a slight margin, you can multiply this small margin by so many fractions and you can get a landslide for Trump. They are already aware of it. And that's why I told you in that video that these guys are not really coming to November 3rd for elections. They are coming for obstructions. They know the man is going to win, but they don't want him in the White House. It's just black and white. It's as simple as, as, as that. They just don't want him. So as far as they're concerned, even though they know he's going to win, they don't want him there. And I'm going to prove to you today that these guys have made up their mind that this election season is not for the winning for them. It's not even about who wins or who loses. It's about just getting rid of Donald Trump by whatever means they want to get rid of him. I'll prove it to you right now by something very startling, very shocking that happened recently. I think it was just a few weeks ago. Hillary Clinton, who was supposed to be in court on the 9th of September, testifying about the 33,000 emails and about what happened in Benghazi, Libya. She is now out speaking because the court has just, in some very questionable circumstances, you know, overturned that stuff. And so she's not going to be in court anymore. You know, by the time she was supposed to be in court, that she knew she was going to court, the woman just kept quiet. But now listen, now that the court has overturned it, she is out talking again, all of a sudden. So we've got to have a massive legal operation. I know the Biden campaign is working on that. We have to have poll workers, and I urge people who are able to uh, be a poll worker, we have to have our own uh, teams of people to counter the, the force of intimidation that the Republicans and Trump are going to put outside polling places. This is a big organizational challenge, but at least we know more about what they're going to do. And, you know, Joe Biden should not concede under any circumstances because I think this is going to drag out and eventually, I do believe he will win if we don't give an inch. Did you hear that? Joe Biden should not concede under any circumstances because I believe he is going to win. She believes that this is going to drag out. 
should not concede under any circumstances. What does that tell you? Exactly what they played out in the war game. It was time for the losing Podesta, in this case, Joe Biden, to concede just like Hillary did in 2016. And all of a sudden, he says, I don't, I don't think my party would like me to do this. But you already know that you lost the election. What are they asking for? They are asking for chaos. They are asking for war, for civil war in America. They're setting the tone for civil war in America. How can a prominent politician in America, the beacon of liberty and democracy, make such a statement and get away with it? Joe Biden should not concede under any circumstances. In other words, even if he loses, he should never concede to Donald J. Trump. Out of her mouth, if I had said this without playing the video, some people would say, oh, there he goes again. Conspiracy theorist. She never said that. He's making it all up. There you have it. Joe Biden should never concede under any circumstances, even though they know that American law says whoever wins the elections becomes the president. So the will of the American people no longer matter. It doesn't care. They don't care about that. It doesn't matter what American people think. It's only what the cabals think. It's only what the globalists led by Clinton, what they think is what they want to happen on that day. Not what the American people... So why are we even thinking of voting? Why, why should we even have elections in the, in the first place? If Joe Biden should not concede under any circumstance, why should there be elections on November the 3rd? I'm just trying to help you understand how wicked, how evil-minded these people are. And in one of the videos that I'm coming up with, okay, that's the video that's going to shock everybody. I pray YouTube doesn't delete it. I am going to show you clearly in black and white why these people really hate Donald Trump. The actual reason they hate him. And when you find out the reason, you will agree with me that these guys are some of the most demonic some of the most satanic human beings that have walked the surface of this earth. And it's such a shame that people who name the name of the Lord associate themselves with these guys. It's unbelievable to me. There you have it. Do not concede under any circumstances. And so, you heard when she said that it's going to be a huge organizational challenge. So now they already know Okay, that is going to be a huge organizational challenge. So they are putting a lot of things in place. They are pulling together all of their affiliated organizations like BLM and TIFA and all these other ones. They're putting them together so that they will be able to carry out this coup d'etat on American soil. And I will prove it to you. You know, many of us don't understand what is supposed to happen in America that is starting on the 17th of September, a few weeks from now, actually about two weeks from now. I know a lot of people don't, don't think about this. This is a huge takeover of government planned by the Democrats. It's called a White House siege only because of Donald J. Trump. Laws no longer matter because of Trump. It's called White House siege. I'm just going to read you a few things under the White House siege. There's something they call White House siege, tactical briefing number one. Okay, so as you can see the symbol right there on the screen, I am taking you down. You can go ahead and read this. Just go to adbusters.org, okay, and then you can read about the White House siege. But I just want to read you a few points that I'm going to highlight to help you understand what these guys are planning for America, okay? Now, it says here, it says, we will lay siege to the White House and we will sustain it for exactly 50 days. This is the White House siege. A siege only works if it is sustained. We witnessed this, the multiplying power of a strategic occupation nine years ago. You dig in, hold your ground, and the tension accumulates, amplifies, goes global. All right, you see, they know how it works. Now, it's a 50 days, September 17th to November 
third, made it clear, all right? Let us once again summon the sweet revolutionary non-violence that was our calling card in Zuccotti Park. Now, listen to this that will interest you. It says, White House siege will electrify the U.S. election season. And it doesn't stop there. Drawing wind from Me Too, BLM, Extinction Rebellion, and protests against Trump's lethal bungling of coronavirus will inspire a global movement of systemic change, a global spring, a cultural heave towards a new world order. Don't mind that they put true world order here. I'm going to show you the original publication they made on their website. You can see it there. It says new world order. When the word came out about what they had written, they quickly went back and replaced new with true. So they are actually still saying the same thing. New world order. And you're looking at BLM mentioned here. You're looking at Me Too movement mentioned here. These are all the people who are championing the new world order. The same satanic new world order. The regime brought about by the Antichrist. And you have Christians who are supporting BLM, who are supporting the Me Too movement, who are even supporting Antifa. There you have it on their website. BLM. The New World Order. That's why when you look at the fist they raised up on this website, you can see that they have a black spot right here by their wrist. And that black spot, what does it show? It shows the mark of the beast. These are the people who want to take over America. And they want to lay, it's lay siege on the White House starting from September 17th all the way until the day of elections. Are you kidding me? You do not lay siege to the White House except if the man in the White House had lost elections and refused to leave. Isn't that when people begin to lay siege? On what basis are you laying siege to the White House when elections are yet to take place? On what basis are you laying siege to the White House when the American people have not yet spoken as to whether they want Donald Trump in the White House still or whether they want to see his back as good as soon as possible? Why are you laying siege, 50 day siege to the White House running into the day of elections? Because you want to obstruct the elections openly. You are not hiding it anymore. You now want to openly obstruct the U.S. elections. You want to openly tell, intimidate people away from voting for Donald J. Trump. You want to obstruct a free and fair election that is planned for November the 3rd. You are laying siege because as far as you guys are concerned, even if Trump wins, he must leave. If he loses, you're still going to chase him out. So why are you laying the siege? Why not let American people decide whether Trump needs to continue to stay there or whether he needs to get out? It is, it is a, there's a process. It is called elections. But you see, Hillary Clinton called it a huge organizational challenge. So they have already put these organizations that are leftist, Democrat-sponsored organizations together to carry out the satanic coup d'etat on November the 3rd. That's why they are trying to beat the time so they don't get caught unawares. They want to beat the time because they've already forecasted an organizational challenge so they have to start early. So they can take over the government. That's what she said and that's what they're doing right now. Because they've already said it from the war games that look, Joe Biden is not going to concede elections to Trump. And Hillary Clinton has just said it, that he should never concede under any circumstances. And now Me Too movement and BLM and the so-called whatever they call themselves who are going to lay siege to the White House are coming to show you that they are ready to make sure that the American president, duly elected by the people of America, uh, will, will be kicked out of office even when he wins elections, which is going by the will of the American people. If someone ever told you that something like this was going to happen in present-day America, would you have believed it? It is happening live and direct. I told you before, I said the Democrat Party of today is not interested in any elections. They don't care because the handwriting is clearly written on the wall that these guys are not going anywhere at all. They know they have lost this election. 
They know by very huge margins. And this is why every day I cry. I call on believers, on people of goodwill to rally together, come close and support this man who we know is actually doing the right thing. Irrespective of whatever mistakes or differences you may have with him, irrespective of whatever you may have heard of him, you can look at the people who are fighting him and then look at his own side and then use your own senses to check. Just decide for yourself. When you look at the way these people are behaving, is this what you have known America to be? And yet you're waiting for someone to convince you to know that these are evil people who want to overturn everything good, turn it upside down. But God is going to disappoint all of them. I want to show you another proof of what these guys are planning to do. It's almost as if they are now beginning to look at us like we are fools, like we are animals. The kind of things they are even saying, I'm almost beginning to think they are insane, like they are losing their minds. How can someone be so scared to the point that they are now mad? Did you hear what Nancy Pelosi said, even though she doesn't, that woman is almost like she's not normal? But did you hear what she said recently? Nancy Pelosi doesn't think that Joe Biden should debate Donald Trump. No, I'm not making this up. And you know me, I'm going to show you the video right now. She doesn't think. She actually is advising Joe Biden not to debate with Donald Trump. Bunker Joe should not debate. They've been hiding him in the bunkers all along. All along, the America has been asking, where is the man that is coming to take over from Donald J. Trump? Let's hear from him. Now, Pelosi says, there's even no need for you to hear from him alongside. So, everything that Americans are used to, the things they know about the election season, the Democrats are overturning all of them, throwing them away, just because of one man called Trump. Things that have been done for ages in America, there's always a presidential debate. Always. Now they don't want it. They don't want it anymore. Watch. I wouldn't, I wouldn't legitimize a conversation with him, nor a debate in terms of the presidency of the United States. Now I know that the Biden campaign thinks in a different way about this, but I just, I thought what he did in the uh, 2016 was disgraceful, stalking Hillary Clinton like that. I was disappointed that the press didn't say, go back to your station. You're not here, you're not on this stage. You, are, you have your own podium, she has hers. So I, I think that he'll probably act in a way that is beneath the dignity of the presidency. He does that every day. Uh, but I think he will also belittle what the debates are supposed to be about. And they're not to be about uh, the skullduggery on the part of somebody who has no um, respect for the office he holds. I don't think that he should dignify that conversation with Donald Trump. You could have you ask them any questions, both of them, just take their own stage for any number of uh, conversations about any subjects. Hold them accountable. What are they proposing? What is their vision? What is their knowledge? How are we going to get it done? How do they connect with the American people? Let that be a conversation with the American people, not a, a, an exercise in skullduggery. Okay, so did you hear that? You saw that? Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the House, is saying with her own mouth that she doesn't think that Joe Biden should honor the conversation, in other words, the debate with Donald Trump. Why? And she gave that flimsy reason that she did. She was disappointed by what happened in 2016 when Trump was pacing around during the debate with Clinton and she said he was talking her. But she was also walking around too. But now she says, so because Trump was walking around, she called that stalking Clinton and because of that, well, he shouldn't have debate with Joe Biden. Is Joe Biden not a man? Let's say even that he was trying to stalk Clinton, who's a woman. Is Joe Biden not a man? If, if he walks over to Joe Biden, let Joe Biden walk over to him. This is a man-to-man -man thing. 
Why are they overprotective of Bunker Joe? Why? Because they know the guy is not fit. And they know that many people who follow them don't think anymore. They don't reason anymore. And they think that all of us are supposed to be that way. Can you imagine what came out of a public office holder in America? That he should not honor the company. He said, take them, just let them go talk to them. Let them take their own stage. So in other words, go to Trump and interview him and then go to Biden and interview him wherever he wants to be interviewed in the bunker and then just hold them accountable. Forget about debating because Biden has nothing to debate on. 48 years or so in government. What are you going to debate on? Trump is just less than four years in government. Tell me how, what are the basis for the debate? And yet people are not seeing these things. You want to blame Donald Trump for all the problems of America. And Joe Biden, how many years? More than 40 years in government. That's why he's trying to run away from debate. He wants to come and be your president, but he doesn't want to debate. I know somewhere where something like this has happened before. It's Nigeria. The place is called Nigeria. The evil that has befallen Nigeria today in the form of President Muhammad Buhari did exactly the same thing. Refused to debate. He was very arrogant about it. He was very calcitrant. He was so confident because Obama, Biden, Kerry, and Clinton had already assured him that it was going to be his for the taking. And I'm going to prove it in another video that I'm about to do now. This is what is happening. The globalists have told Joe and Kamala, don't worry about the elections. We're going to get you in there by every means. That's why they don't care. This is the same thing that happened in Nigeria. And look at the government. And that's what they want to bring up on America. God forbid it will not happen. It will not happen. Mark my words. It's not going to happen. We will pray. We will work. We will do everything we need to do. And I know that God is with us. And we're going to make sure that this evil reign does not descend on the great United States of America. Because if it does, the rest of us around the world are finished. As goes America, so goes the world. That's why we're concerned about America. I laugh when I see some people. I don't want to call you lunatics. But I see some people who actually really deserve to be called that. When they come out, like, oh, focus on what is happening in your country. Nonsense. Absolute badadash. What are you talking about? You just saw the proof that the same a regime in the same America imposed what you have in Nigeria and you only your gut heart to still talk and say, hey, focus on what? No, you need to focus on international politics. The world is a village, the global village. That's why when you hit the internet, you are all over the world. Shut up if you don't know what to say. We need to be wise. We need to know how to do advocacy. We need to know how to do lobbying. If you don't lobby, those people who have been crying back home in Nigeria, in Cameroon, in different African, what have they cried out for? If there is no power backing you up, you are doomed. You are finished. That's why we are wisely doing what we are doing today. We need partners. We need global partners. If you're a Christian, you don't even have to be a Christian. If you're a man of goodwill, with right conscience, with the right conscience, I'm calling upon you today. Join the train. Let us re-elect a man who means well, not just for America, but for the rest of the free world. Without this, I'm telling you the gospel truth, our world will go from this to this. I'm telling you. You can already see it happening. We all need to be wise. I keep saying this in almost every of my videos. Just leave sentiments aside. Leave what the mainstream media is polluting your mind with aside. And think for one second for yourself and by yourself, you will see that the truth is on this side where we are going. That's why we do all the things we do. We're doing it for posterity. We're doing it for the future, for the unborn generation. Because the time has come for action. And I just hope that our African brothers and sisters all over America, especially Nigerians, especially my Igbo people, that they will just sleep and wake up and suddenly a new brain is in their brain, in their skulls, and they will begin to think aright. 
and leave all these incendiary, these tiny little things that they complain about and begin to focus on the bigger picture. If you have not bought your Trump gear, your Trump merchandise, we still have them. We're selling from America, we're selling from Nigeria, we're selling from different parts of Africa. And if you're not able to get it from wherever you are, just call our main uh, admin line and they're gonna get in touch with you and let you know how you're gonna get it. My secretary called me and she was telling me that some people were scared that were thinking that, is this gonna be a scam or something? Please, it's not a scam. If you see the number that you're calling on my screen, it is no scam at all. Relax, please. If they've told you they're gonna get you your cap and your t-shirts, don't be afraid, just be at peace. You will get it. I've told them, I gave a warning. I said, I want quality t-shirt and quality caps. Just the same kind that they give to me. And that's what you see out there. So please, if you have made a made payment, just relax and be patient. Your stuff that you ordered is going to get to you. As long as the number you're calling is the number you see on the screen right now as I speak. May God bless and keep you. Please, if you have not gotten it, make sure you order it and get it by all means. And for those of you who are supporting our alternative media program, thank you so much. Things have already begun to change in our office. A lot of things we ordered are already coming to us in a matter of you know a few days. And you can see some changes are taking place. We're going to do a lot of this. So many things are happening. The alternative website is under construction and people are still giving. I have a couple of churches who have told me they're going to be giving money every single month. In fact, there's another brother who called me a pastor. He says his ministry will be giving money to us every week. They have service. And he's been maintaining that. And I want to say, may God bless you. And all these anonymous givers who have been given to us, you have no idea how much I pray for you and how much God is going to bless you beyond your widest imagination. Thank you so much. If you haven't gotten involved, please try and get involved. We will continue to sing this song and tell the truth until it hits home. God bless you.